Greetings, and welcome to the Open-Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland, and I'm your host. It's the 20th of May, 2019, and it's time for our monthly review podcast. This time we'll be reviewing four thought-provoking natural living-related books. Bark Remedies and Flower Essences by Vivian Williamson. You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. The Ayahuasca Test Pilot's Handbook by Chris Killam. And Happiness Genes by James D. Bard, PhD. Let's begin. The Bark Remedies and Flower Essences by Vivian Williamson. A comprehensive guide to the beautiful world of flower essences and their natural healing powers. Covers in detail the first system of flower essences to be discovered, as well as the most recent developments. Now I gave this a three stars because it was so easy to follow, but not an advanced book. It really is for beginners only. Um, It was an excellent guide for someone new, as as I just said, to the bark flower remedies. This book instructs the reader in the preparation of specific remedies right through to their prescription. This book is a pathway to the release of unresolved, sometimes buried pain, as flowers unlock our emotional imbalances and help to promote a healthier life, or so goes the motto. I particularly like the part about the doctrine of signatures, which explained the physical characteristics of plants and how they correspond to their remedy. It really made me think. Would I recommend this book to anyone? Yes and no. Yes, if you have an interest in living more naturally. No, if you still feel a pharmacy is where you find your pain relief. You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Louise L. Hay explains inside her book, You Can Heal Your Life, how our beliefs and ideas about ourselves are often the cause of our emotional problems and physical maladies, and how, by using certain tools, we can change our thinking and our lives for the better. You Can Heal Your Life reached the New York Times bestseller list and remained on it for 12 consecutive weeks. This book is five stars. It is literally life-changing. It changed my life. It is truly life-transforming as it gives the reader the ability to create a new livable reality through the power of their thoughts and the accompanying affirmations. I spent three months working my way through this particular tomb in my mid-thirties at a time of life when I was questioning not only my place in our world, but also the decisions that had brought me to this position and place. It helped a lot. The amount of time it takes a person to work through the various sections of the book varies. Everybody's different. I had one friend do it in less than a month. I took three. Another took six months. Don't rush. It's your pace. I would recommend purchasing the additional companion book as it provides a single repository for all of your workings. If you don't purchase it, you'll need a notebook. The Ayahuasca Test Pilot's Handbook by Chris Killam. The Ayahuasca Test Pilot's Handbook provides a practical guide to ayahuasca use, aiding seekers in making right and safe decisions about where to go, who to drink with, and what to expect. Ayahuasca, the Amazonian psychoactive plant brew, has become vastly popular. Once the sole purview of shamans and indigenous native people in the great Amazon rainforest, ayahuasca is now becoming well known and widely used around the globe. Today, foreigners from all over the world flock in ever-burgeoning numbers to the steamy Amazon, drinking bitter ayahuasca with shamans in order to access its potent healing and spirit-enlivening effects. 
What began as a mere trickle of visitors in the 1980s has become a surging riptide of seekers. Now to the review. I gave this four stars because it was an enjoyable read and I did find it enlightening. I was asked to review this handbook by a good friend and an ayahuasca ceremony professional. He has over 30 ceremonies and multiple trips to the Amazon under his belt. As a novice to all things psychedelic, I found the book intimidating at first. A lot of the words unfamiliar inside its pages and the lifestyle of the author quite unimaginable to myself. However, I pride myself on being open-minded, so here we go. I do love to learn new things, so I prepared my favorite coffee, which is my drug of choice, and settled in for an afternoon of wonder. I should begin by saying that it's obvious that Chris Killam is a fountain of knowledge on this subject. His past experience and in-depth research has certainly opened my eyes to future possibilities. I found Chris's insights to be well-grounded and I really enjoyed reading his personal story of how he came to use the medicine and what he has learned from it. The handbook covers pretty much everything that someone about to undergo an ayahuasca experience or ceremony would wish to know. It covers not only the history involved, but also the associated cultural significance, as well as science fact. I have to say that apart from a few references to the gin, the book remained grounded. I was concerned it might be written more for an alternate lifestyle person. But Chris's words were rational, especially when he discussed the safety concerns associated with ayahuasca. It was great information and tips for newbies. Am I glad I read this handbook to Nirvana? Mm, definitely. If you or any of your family and friends are planning a trip to experience the delights of ayahuasca in the near future, this is the perfect travel book and guide. I'd even go so far as to say it's essential reading prior to any of these ceremonies. Happiness Genes by James D. Baird, PhD. Happiness Genes unlock the positive potential hidden in your DNA, examines the nature and source of happiness from ancient times to the present. It presents research in biology and epigenetics that show DNA contains genes for natural happiness and your ultimate well being. Happiness Genes instructs you how to switch on your happiness genes, creating a biological cascade of well-being, cutting-edge research in microbiology, genetics, epigenetics, and a 28-day natural happiness program. Happiness Genes proves a definitive link between science and spirituality. It shows how you are biologically wired for natural happiness. So there's the intro. Uh, now, I read the book. Um, it was a suggestion from um, one of my columnists, uh, the Happiness Ninja in fact, and I thank her for it. I gave this book five stars and I kind of prompted everyone to read this book. It, it was amazing. I loved it, mostly because it states that we are all biologically wired to be happy. Isn't that a wonderful statement and a wonderful view of life? So why did it feel wrong at times working my way through the various chapters? Has my programming that this book discusses at length been really good? Have I been programmed to think that I do need more, I need newer, and I need faster? And of course, if I live in America, I need bigger as well. After just reading a couple of chapters, my whole viewpoint has skewed dramatically. The feeling you get when you are reading a truth, you know, that epiphany that hits you, it just kept on hitting me again and again and again. The more I read, the more epiphanies. Now, I get a lot of epiphanies, but not five in one hour. And so when that's happening, you know that you're reading something, you know, uh, monumental. But anyway, enough of my own mental ramblings. What's great about the book? Obviously, it's the ultimate wake up call. The choice between taking either the blue or the red pill. Read or don't read it. If you choose to go down the rabbit hole, you will gain knowledge on a range of topics from genetics to well-being, happiness, and the field, of course, of epigenetics. Quite the buzzword at the moment. 
This book is a mixture of spirituality, history, science, and the current upheaval that most humans are feeling. It expresses ideas that should be obvious to most people, but have been hidden away or programmed away from the mainstream. It promotes happiness and our awareness of each moment of our existence and tells us that we don't have to settle for the genes we inherited. We can overcome our limitations. It's packed with science-based research and analysis that fully supports Dr. Lipton's own research. Um, he was the New York Times best-selling author of The Biology of Belief, Happiness Genes, that proved the definitive link between science and spirituality. So, what's not so great about the book? To the average person, it's all great. But to those whose life revolves around science, this book would be a disappointment. Personally, I felt the topics were presented in a logical manner that does not overwhelm the reader with scientific language, but was enough to explain complex information and theorem. I recommend that you read this book and learn how to reprogram your genes for a happier life. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com.